For my diversity field experiences, I wanted to work at a place that helped people who have struggled with finding food. I decided to volunteer at Loaves and Fishes. Loaves and Fishes is an organization that provides meals to homeless, elderly, and low-income families. Loaves and Fishes is a nas uh, nationally recognized program, and so each time a meal is served, it's various, usually Christian organizations, that put on the meals. Each site has rotating volunteers, some who come regularly and some who just come when they can. Loaves and Fishes sites are all free and open to the public, and while they usually serve the uh, elderly and the homeless, there is also the children who end up coming too. The Minnesota Department of Education actually reimburses Loaves and Fishes for each ch child who is fed during a single session. I was unable to see any children at the two sites I was at, but from talking with people who were there, they said it is pretty common for them, especially when you get into the inner city. The first site that I was able to visit was called Creekside Community Center. This is a, uh, a community center in Bloomington, Minnesota, and a church from Burnsville, Minnesota was actually the ones who were putting it on. That night they were serving chili, and they said that they do chili on the first Thursday of every month. They do it in the summer and the winter, and they said that it's because a lot of the people enjoy the chili and they like knowing what they're getting. They don't necessarily want to come in and have it be a surprise every time. For those who were being served, the average age range was between 50 and 80 years old. Most of them were white and elderly community centers, as there was a retirement and assisted living um, apartment complex that was right across the street. Additionally, there, was bus, uh, there were bus routes that were able to bring people to the community center. Now, one of the problems that they kept having with the bus routes was that one bus wouldn't drop patrons off until about 15 minutes before the meal time was over. So some of the patrons who got there didn't get a whole lot of time to eat and socialize, but they were able to make it there for part of it. I was able to visit a little bit with the host group at the Creekside Community Center. These volunteers were there on the first Thursday of every month. They were really good at connecting with guests with guests as they joked about the weather and they kept making comments about the bonus drivers that somebody had generously donated. One thing that I found interesting was the fact that the people who were serving the elderly were also in the same age range as those. They might have been slightly younger but all in all they were on the upper age scale as the guests were. The one closest to my age, so I'm a 25 year old, and the one closest to my age was a retired teacher who was in his 60s. There was nobody else young there but me, and that was the same when I went to the next site that I was able to visit as well. I was able to interact with numerous patrons as they were eating. One of the tables that I found very entertaining was a table of four gentlemen. There were two war vets, one retired mechanic, and one very proud grandfather. These four were the epitome of being there for the social interactions. The war vets kept discussing how the world changed quickly, and they kept commenting on my age and how lucky I was to grow up today. They had stories about how hard it was for them and how easy I have it these days. The retired mechanic was making some pretty good comments about my car and making sure that I knew what to do with certain situations of PR, which ended up being super awesome because shortly after there, my car ended up needing to go to the shop and I did remember what he said and how I needed to approach the situation, which was super cool for me. Another really good interaction I was able to have was a 60 year old gentleman who identified as gay. This was super cool for me as it was June and so it was Gay Pride Month. He, one of the things that he was very grateful for was to be able to serve himself. This group and this situation, they were serving their chili, they actually had the guests come up and get their own food. I learned that that's not what usually happens. Usually all the guests are seated and they have servers who go out and hand everyone their plates. This gentleman was very excited because he got to pick what he wanted on his plate and he could say no thank you or more of something else. He said that usually doesn't happen and he was so thankful that he got to do it and he thanked every single person numerous times. Another thing that I was pretty interested to see was how the other patrons in the group reacted. From what I have interacted with elderly, it hasn't been a lot, kind of just with my family, maybe a few others, they're not as welcoming with the whole gay stuff and the different um, sexual preferences and all that kind of stuff. This gentleman ignored everybody. He was very proud of who he was. He was, um, he had on his rainbow colors and he was telling everybody about the parade and he was super excited and he just kind of kept going. Um, it was really cool, like I said, to see as I didn't think that was a thing. That was, I mean, super naive of me, but that I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware that uh, he'd have the confidence to do that in a room full of people who clearly didn't agree with what he was saying. The takeaways that I got from the Creekside Community Center was that how many elderly people struggle with food if it wasn't for free meals. 
All of them talked about how important it was for them to come and they all cleared their schedules to make sure they came. Not only was it a spot to get free healthy meals, but they were also there to socialize. They all had their little groups and they all kept joining up with one another and catching up on the weeks, on the what had happened to them over the last week. One thing that they really liked was having a young person like me helping. Everyone made a comment that they haven't seen a young person there helping unless it was somebody's um, child or grandchild who brought them to the location. Thinking back on it, I really think it's because a lot of people don't know about it. Before I did this project, I hadn't really heard of them. I didn't know what they did. I didn't know how easy it was to help out and volunteer and make an impact in these people's lives. I was also able to go to another location um, in the next city over. It was St. Mark's Church in Shakopee, Minnesota. These demographics were there about 70 years old and above, and most of them were white. One huge difference between this side and the Creek side was that a lot of um, there was a higher percentage of mental health difficulties. The site coordinator talk, I talked to guessed that it was due to the fact that Scott County's Mental Health Center is right across the street from where um, Loaves and Fishes at St. Mark's happens. So she figured there was a lot of people who kind of did all what they needed to do there and they were more aware of it as things signs were posted as they drove back and forth from appointments and stuff. Another difference between St. Mark's Church and Creekside Community Center was that people drove themselves for a walk because there was no bus route. So most people showed up right at the beginning and slowly trickled in until about halfway the halfway point. And then those who were there were there. Nobody else came and nobody um, kind of had to rush through anything. I was able to talk to quite a few people at St. Mark's Church. One of the groups I talked to were three women in their late 70s to early 80s. They were there purely for the social aspect of weekly dinners. They talked about how you know, each one of them had a garden at home and they liked to grow these different plants and stuff but they enjoyed coming to dinner with other people and getting to see who was there. Um, they ended up being huge quilters in the church, and so I learned a lot about different quilting techniques, and um, they all sh were showing me pictures of their favorite quilts that they made, and it was super cool. I, was, I got a chance to work, um, interact with someone who was struggling with mental health difficulties as he, I, I ran into one elderly man who was struggling with Alzheimer's. He kept giving me this really strange look, like he should know me from somewhere, and I... For the life of me, I'm pretty sure I don't know him. It ended up coming out later that I probably looked like somebody he already knew, but he wanted to tell me all these things and he kept telling me stories thinking I'd remember them and I felt really bad that I didn't know what they were. He, um, everyone who was interacting with him just kept reminding him that I'm somebody else, he doesn't know who I am, but it's okay because I still am there to listen. So it's really cool to watch them interact with each other and support each other, um, especially those with the mental health difficulties. The overall takeaways I took away from both was how Social interactions become increasingly important as the adults grow older. I get to see a lot of the younger kids as they're trying to figure out their life, they're trying to figure out their social groups, they're doing all this stuff, and then it became really cool to see kind of what's going to happen at the end when they're done with their jobs and they're done with their school and how important it is for them to stay connected with people so that the social stuff isn't just a, um, a growing up thing. Social interactions are continuously important as we get older. So the free meals were more, um, were more than just the food. They were there for the social interactions. It amazed me how many older adults were assisting older adults. Like I said, I was the youngest person in both sites I went to, and I found that very strange. Um, and I was kind of bummed the fact that there weren't any more young people. Um, I definitely um, noticed the groups, how, how, how groups continue to form within the regulars who attended. And I noticed how actually they were very open to all the new people who were there. My biggest, my biggest takeaway that I have from this is that I will be going back to help because I thought it was super, a super awesome organization. I'd love to just get to know how different people see the world, what they've been through, and how they can help us move forward.